pesticides in foods are a real issue. And there's a lot of confusion out there over should I go organic or can I wash it off or can I use conventional agricultural foods? What's the difference in that? Are there issues? Are there health issues? Maybe even environmental issues? The answer is pretty clear cut. But there's the added confusion out there because of the misinformation on social media. And there's a lot of people out there who will read something and go, okay, let me tell you about, it. first of all, before I go into all of the detail about the studies and the reality of it all, my background in pesticides dates back 40 years. In fact, my first research project was 1988. Uh, oops, sorry, not 40 years, so that's only 36 years, okay? And I did for a while there, eight years, hold a position, a community science position, uh, as a director on the board of the organization in Australia that literally regulates pesticides and agricultural and veterinary chemicals. So it was called the Ag Pesticide Veterinary Medicines Authority. So I held that position for eight years uh, and lots of lots of other things I've done along the way, but that's not important. What's important here is to clear up this issue and it starts off with the terminology we use. In Australia, we use something called the maximum residue level. That's the amount of pesticide, if you exceed that, you're probably using the pesticides the wrong way. In the US, it's called tolerance limits and other places, different names. And these uh, are MRLs and tolerance levels aren't uh, a message about you getting sick or not. They're really just saying, how was the pesticide used? According to good agricultural practice, and you use these 48 pesticides in here, this is what the residues should be. Unfortunately, that's just an indicator for the farmers and the government to uh, go back in and teach them how to use the pesticide better or not. And the acceptable daily intake is just, or in the US it's called the reference dose, is literally just the amount of a pesticide that you can be exposed to over a period of time, which uh, if you get below which is safer and above which isn't a real health threat because they're built in lots of uh, factors in there. Well, it is a health risk, it really is. That's what the research is showing. And it becomes pretty clear cut when you look at the evidence. And the evidence is, is not just clear cut for what's in them and what's not, but also the health. And they've done some fantastic studies over the last five years uh, about removing pesticide in the food from people and what happens and how long it takes and so on. So wait for those ones. They're, they're really interesting studies. And the first bit of information is really about organic. When you go organic, there is no doubt, consistently across the board, and we're talking um, nine out of 10 studies, or 95% of the study, whatever number, uh, decrease in pesticide residues and a decrease in their metabolites. When you use a pesticide, it breaks down. And unfortunately, the governments and even the companies out there don't know all of the breakdown products out there. And so we only measure for one or two components of it, but the metabolites, the breakdown products, are lower. Antibiotics are lower in the animal crops or the animal food, um, such as uh, the beef that are fed in tight little bunches, you know, get 10,000 in a very small space. They have a lot more antibiotic use and pesticide use and other things as well. And that's where you get your Wagyu beef, which is why I don't eat Wagyu beef. I have a free range. And if I eat meat, I have free range, free range chickens. I also make sure I have free range fish because fish are probably the worst one where they're con concentrated in one little area and they're given antibiotics and given the food. Oh, we'll talk about that in a moment. And of course, uh, a decrease in heavy metals, in particular cadmium. And the major reason for that is that the conventional agriculture use uh, uh, a superphosphate fertilizer. And one of the contaminants of that is cadmium. And the research shows time and time again, the more you use it, the more it builds up. The more it builds up, the more it gets into the food. So you have this pesticide cadmium increasing every year that this superphosphate is used on it and increases in there. And of course, this is where a little story about MRLs come in when I was a director on the APV Medicines Authority. Um, there was a situation where Chinese peanuts weren't being imported in Australia because they had uh, they exceeded the maximum residue level. Oh, okay. So there were two options out there and they took both. One, we could increase the maximum residue level because, well, it's safe, cadmium safe, rubbish, it is not. And the overwhelming evidence shows that it should be down half, 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 half again. Yeah? But back then, and I couldn't argue against the other people on the board, I did, but I didn't win. 
And what happened was that they said, okay, we'll increase the maximum residue level, let the peanuts come in. And if they mix them with Australian peanuts, that'll even halve it even more. So that's even better, well below. Uh, but the Chinese peanuts have these higher levels. So be wary about where you get peanuts from and other foods for that matter. I uh, look, a little hint, by the way, your own local, if you're in America, you're in the UK, you're in Australia, eat what is coming out of your country. And people are critical of what happens, the regulations here, but they are, are, are still the best in the world when it comes to pesticide reg regulations. I'm very, very critical of them, but they're still the best, and I, I trust the information I get from them much more. So we're coming back down here, heavy metals, polyphenols increase. These are the, the nutrients that you get in them, the carotene, so beta carotene, for example, lutein, zeanthin, all the things I talk about that are really good for you, and anti antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, and all that, and they tend to be higher. An increase in minerals, particularly things like magnesium and selenium which are often short in our uh, food supply and most people are pretty well short of those in their body so organic has higher levels of these primarily because organic also feeds the soil it looks after regrowing the soil and that soil um, microbiome in there is able to make more of the minerals available to the plants and an increase in omega-3s in the animal crops and this is in, in, across the board, when, you, when the cows, for example, eat grass, they pick up more omega-3s from the actual grass itself and then concentrate it. Very small compared to fish, but they concentrate it. Just an example. When they are fed certain foods in these uh, very tight um, farm areas uh, on concrete, they don't get fed that omega-3s because that's an expensive food to add in. So omega-3s are higher, and that's again why we go for the uh, organic agriculture. And then it comes to, okay, so what are the health effects? And that's something, again, I've been involved in for that, what is it, 36 or many, many, many years. And in fact, I wrote some papers, in fact, my first study was looking at pesticides in homes and exposure. And I've written papers on pesticides in food that have been published in books and in journals. Eggs, we did, did one on the eggs here in Perth, Western Australia, because people were growing them in the backyard and there was a lot of, of the old pesticide residues in the soil. Uh, we, we've looked at, I've been involved in government reports, legal reports, and even, even superficially media information out there. So I've got this good background, pretty convincing background out there. So then we get on to organic food. What does it mean? Consistently across the board, the studies are showing significant health effects. The problem is it's very hard to allocate a percentage, 1%, 10% increase or things, but we do know they're causing this. And big longitudinal studies, so they followed populations who have been eating organic compared to conventional. They you know, try to mix and match and get all the other factors like weight and size and gender and all that equal in the groups and they compare them. And with, or with conventional agriculture, you've seen an increase in allergic sensitization. So the pesticides are contributing. Uh, and in one study, they actually found a 46% increase in eczema as a result of conventional agriculture, the pesticides in those. Uh, an increase in uh, types media in children, an increase in metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular risk, uh, an increase in cancer risk, particularly uh, across the board cancer risk, but particularly in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and postmenopausal breast cancer, the two ones that show up the most, uh, I suppose the strongest, the most evidence is, is behind that. And we also see an increase in ADHD and other disorders. Uh, and this all comes down to finally an increase in mortality. So if you put that in perspective, then we go over to reproduction. Now, the problem with all of this and everything else people are going to tell you is we measure, and I was involved with the measurements, we measure the pesticides, but we often don't know what the metabolites, which I mentioned here, are. And so it's very hard to actually calculate what part of the pesticide, the original one, the second level, the third level of breakdown of it, and how these interact with each other. This is called synergy or the combinations of it. And sometimes pesticides can interact and not have an effect. Sometimes they can interact and have a little bit and sometimes they can have a huge effect, a, a synergy of them. And when you're being exposed to multiple, the standards that you're talking about, the MRL and the ADIs and so on, are all about one pesticide. So if you've got three pesticides that have the same effect, then imagine what they're doing. So this is where a lot of confusion comes into it. Coming back here, reproductive is an area where there's a lot of concern. 
and uh, we see consistently a decrease in fertility. Uh, in 2025 studies, they're showing a, a, a lower ovarian reserve, which, which is basically a, one of the primary indicators of fert fertility in women, and uh, lower sperm quality count in men, a decrease in um, clinical pregnancy, and a decrease in live births, so an increase in abortions. These are the type of facts and figures coming out. But what's great is there are studies showing what happens when you move across and when and how long and all these other factors that come into play.